the shores of beautiful Nassau, Bahamas. Welcome to Walking in Victory with Bishop Neil C. Ellis. The powerful and prophetic ministry of Bishop Neil C. Ellis is impacting the lives of believers all around the world. His bold and forthright presentation of spiritual truths and biblical principles is sure to change your life forever. Get ready to experience a fresh approach to ministry as this anointed author and pastor teaches us how to walk in victory. Walking in victory. Well, God bless you today. This is Neil Ellis, uh, and I want to welcome you to another edition of Walking in Victory. It's winding down, it's winding down, but let me first of all say Happy New Year to all of you who have not had an opportunity to express those sentiments to yet for this year 2023. I'm so grateful to God that throughout the vicissitudes of 2022, God brought you into 2023. Listen. It really doesn't matter what's go going on in your life as I speak to you. You have every right to give God thanks and to give Him praise for your life, for the fact that you are still in the right frame of your mind. You can look on the television or whatever you're viewing this telecast from and uh, you can see that uh, I am who I am. You know my name. You, you know what the day of the week is. Man, you're in the right frame of your mind. For the most part, you have the active use of your limbs. Listen, God is good to you. And every now and again, you ought to just pause and give him thanks, even if you're not sure what you're thanking him for. Because the truth of the matter is, it's in him that we live and move and have our bed. So once again, a happy new year to you. This is the year that you don't need to expect God to be doing the usual in your life. You can expect him to do the unusual, the uncommon, the unpredictable, and yes, the unprecedented. I believe the testimonies will abound by the end of this year over the uncommon, unusual, unpredictable, and unprecedented things that God has done in your life. Well, my brothers and sisters, most of you who are regular viewers to this Walking in Victory telecast would know, or you have some kind of idea, that in 2012, during my sabbatical, the Lord told me, give the church 10 more, more years as its senior pastor. That was in December 2012. Many of you know that uh, my official retirement service was last month in December on the 11th of 2022. Today, or whenever you're watching this program, but on the 8th of January 2023, I delivered my final message in all of the services at Mount Tabor. And at that service, I pronounced the high priestly benediction upon all of them. After 36 years, I've now come to the end of my journey as the senior pastor of the Mount Tabor Church. This has been such a wonderful journey. I am grateful to God, first of all, that I had this wonderful privilege because, because it's from the platform that he gave me at Mount Tabor that I was able to minister to so many of you via these networks. I'm grateful. Thank you for paying attention. Thank you for daring to listen to me and to trust the words that came out of my mouth as a mouthpiece from God. I'm grateful to all of you. The Bahamian public has been 
such a wonderful, supportive, respectful group of people. So many of you have honored me just by the way you greeted me on the streets and the way you uh, wrote to me and sent emails and messages and just from visiting our church and making me believe that I was being relevant and being significant. Many of you I've seen over the years and you said, I got saved in your church. I met Jesus in Mount Tabor. Bishop, you prayed for me and this happened. You did this and that. Thank you all. On the 9th, tomorrow night, if you're watching this on Sunday the 8th, tomorrow night the 9th, I will serve communion to the members of Mount Tabor for the final time as their senior pastor. And two days later, on the 11th of January 2023, I shall induct a young man anointed by the Lord for these times. His name is Rakino R. Monkar. He will become the second senior pastor of the Mount Tabor Church. I have tremendous confidence in this young man and in his anointing. And I am at peace turning over my life's work into his pastoral care. I ask that you pray for him and cover him. He's only 38 years old, but the future, in my humble view, is so prestigiously bright. And so today, I just wanted to take these moments to share with you and to let you know how grateful I am. I'm going to be back with you in another week or so to share with you because the Walking in Victory program will come to an end at the end of January. But today, we're going to share a portion of the message I delivered at the watch night service. The subject of that message was, let God do it. And I declared that this 2023 is a no fighting year. This is not the year to get even. This is not the year to try to, you know, satisfy your flesh. This is not the year for you to say there's no way over my mother's dead body and I'm not going to let him do this. Listen, this is the year you step back, you stand still, and you let God fight your battle. Indeed, the battles that will rage this year are not yours. Don't fight battles that don't ought to have your name on them. And even at that, you got to let God fight them. So I pray that this brief portion of, of the message preached on watch night would be a blessing to you today. And that at the end of the day, you would be great, grateful that you tuned into this telecast. So in a moment, I take you to our watch night sermon. Let God do it.
this closing message for 2022 and this final watch night message that I will deliver as your spiritual leader is designed to breathe life into your spirit and to position each of you for what's in front of you. In your life and mine for the year in front of us, God does not want to do the usual. He wants to do the unusual, the uncommon, the unpredictable, and the unprecedented. There's so much on the agenda of God for our lives that our natural minds cannot handle the big picture. We can only handle bits and pieces at a time. During the year in front of us, God wants to give us a revelation of where our lives are headed. The next 12 months will be a defining year of not only what's next, but of what's left. This watch night service is like no other. God is using this final hour in this year to position you for the next 12 months in front of you. Like never before, this is not the year to carry over anything into the new year that you know will prevent you from ending the old year and starting off the new year on a strong note. Whatever it is, let it go. Your time is too valuable. Your assignment too important. And the year in front of you too promising for you to go into the new year thinking about what you didn't get or who didn't come through for you or who hurt you. The enemy of our souls would love to see you going into the new year blaming others, blaming yourself, and in some case, cases, blaming God for all that didn't work out for you over the last 12 months. Listen up, everybody. Whatever happened over the last 12 months is not nearly as important as was coming in the next 12 months. We all go through tough times, and indeed, life is designed for us to go through them, not to get stuck in them. For the new year in front of you, God has already arranged a comeback for every setback, vindication for every wrong, and a new beginning for every disappointment. One of the most vivid pictures of God in the Bible is that of being a deliverer. One who sets free or saves from a difficult situation. One thing that we know about God is that he is a great deliverer. So much so that our perplexities cannot baffle his wisdom. Our needs cannot exhaust his resources. Nor can our sorrow 
distance his sympathy. He's a great deliverer. And he always finds a way to deliver his people from whatever it is the systems of this world has set up against them. This is what we see clearly in today's text that deals with the most celebrated story in Israel's history. It's the crossing of the Red Sea. The text comes as a result of Pharaoh finally responding to the call of God to let his people go. The people have been delivered from bondage and out of Egypt. They're free now and on their way to a land that's supposed to be flowing with milk and honey. Things are looking good. It's a great season for them. Excitement is high. They go into the land of freedom when all of a sudden they found themselves in a serious crisis. A crisis is a situation in which something or someone is affected by critical events which leave them feeling helpless or hopeless. A crisis is an event over which we have little or no control. A crisis is when you have been boxed in a situation and you have no human solution out of that problem. All the human resources you have. All the human clout you have. All of the numbers in your cell phone. You put them all together. And they can't get you out. Of the crisis you're in. Because when you're dealing with a crisis. Any direction you look in. Looks like a no win situation. That's the scenario that our text puts in front of us today. The people have been delivered from bondage out of Egypt. They're free. They're on their way to their promised land that's supposed to be flowing with milk and honey. Things are looking good. Excitement is high. They go into the land of freedom. And all of a sudden, they find themselves in a dead-end dilemma. They're in a major crisis. Before them is the great Red Sea. On the other side of, on either side of them are mountains. Behind them now is Pharaoh's army closing in on them. They're in a crisis. These three million people who were joyful and in a state of celebration, all of a sudden their joy has now been turned to sorrow. The excitement has been turned to fear and their high anticipation has now turned to aggravation. And the people cried out to Moses, why did you bring us out of Egypt? Would have been better off if you'd let us die in Egypt. So Moses started crying out to God. Look at God's response to Moses in verse 15. And the Lord said to Moses, Why do you cry to me? What you calling me for? Finish that, Pastor Ellis. Tell the children of Israel. Go forward. And Moses was like, are you kidding me? You see what's in front of us? 
How can I tell them to go forward with this sea in front of us? Come on, God. Make it make sense. But what God was doing was telling Moses to tell them, go forward because he knew he was about to remove the obstacle in front of him. And then he was about to deal with the enemies behind them. See? So, so you got to understand, ladies and gentlemen, uh, uh, whatever your greatest hindrance is, blocking you from going forward with your life over the next 12 months, I have been sent here with a gift to you for my final watch night message, God says he's going to remove it before the end of January. <laughs> Tell the children of Israel, go forward. Are you kidding me? God, do you see what I see? The Red Sea is in front of us. And God wants me to say to you what he was trying to say to Moses. Don't make any real decisions based only upon what you see. The next 12 months are so critical. You got to understand that your faith is only as strong as, what it, as the crisis it is able to survive. God's going to literally put crisis in your way. I prophesy that everybody under the sound of my voice here or wherever you watch me from around the world in the first quarter of the year you will have at least one crisis. And it's not coming from hell. It's not coming from the devil. It's not coming from your enemy. God's going to put it there. Set you up. Get you out. And make people around you recognize what kind of God he is. Now. Ladies and gentlemen. We've heard about this story for many years. And as powerful as this miracle was with the parting of the Red Sea. The parting of the Red Sea was not the real miracle. Read verse 21 one more time, please. Then Moses stretched out his hand over the sea. And the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night. And made the sea into dry. And, what was it? and he did what? Made. made he made. He forced. He compelled the sea to do what? Or compel what? Into dry land. He, he made the sea into dry land. The miracle wasn't just the parting of the sea. Because the parting of the sea should have left muck. They should have been going over the Red Sea mucky. Yeah. Mushy all by the time they cross over the Red Sea. They should have all been dewy. Right. The parting of the water was not the real miracle. But how can you separate an ocean and leave the dry ground? You got a dry ground. Now the whole ground has been left dry from the ocean. The real miracle was not the parting of the sea. The real miracle was the fixing of the ground for them to cross. Listen man. Listen man. Let's go to verse, verse, verse number 26. Let's bring this to a close. Then the Lord said to Moses. What he said? Stretch out your hands over the sea. Now he told them that before. He told them that before. Why is he telling them again? Let's, let's read on here. 
that the waters may come. Oh, you want the water to come back now? The first one, stretch across, stretch, the, stretch, stretch your rod across. Let the water divide. Let the children go forward. The children are all forward. They're going ahead on the other side of the, this Red Sea. Do it again. It's time not to divide it, but to bring it back. Now, why is this important? Because in the middle of the Red Sea, the enemy are still pursuing our people who have crossed. All right, let's read the rest of that, please. That the waters may come back upon the Egyptians on their chariots and on their horsemen. Verse 27. And Moses stretched out his hands over the sea. And when the morning appeared, the sea returned to its full depth. Uh -huh. While the Egyptians were fleeing into it. So the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. 28. Then the waters returned and covered the chariots. What else? The horsemen. What else? And all the army of Pharaoh uh -huh. that came into the sea after them. Read the next thing. Not so much as one of them remained. The same thing that delivered them destroyed their enemies. And this was all God. This was all God. This is the year you got to stand still and watch. Just see the salvation of the Lord. Let God do it this coming year. This is not the year for you to struggle. Your real struggle is going to be your obedience. This is not your fight. Okay, let's, 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 let's wrap it up here. Verses 29 and 30, please. But the children of Israel had walked on dry land in the midst of the sea. And the waters were a wall to them on their right hand and on their left. Mm -hmm. So the Lord saved Israel that day. The Lord did what? Saved Israel that day. Uh-huh. Out of the hand of the Egyptians. Uh-huh. And, and Israel, Israel did what? Saw the Egyptians dead. Dead on the seashore. Israel saw the Egyptians dead on the seashore. Israel saw. Listen, most of your breakthrough in 2023 is not coming in private. going to be public. God's going to be getting glory out of it and most of your enemies he's not going to deal with in private. Now God fought for them. They didn't fight for themselves. Stay away from trying to fight your battles next year keep your ears atoned to the mouth of God listen to what he tells you and then try to obey well ladies and gentlemen of course we are not out of message we are just out of time but I pray that this brief message was a blessing to you and uh Hey man, whatever else you do the rest of this week, whatever else you do the rest of this year, wherever life takes you throughout the course of this year, I want you to know you've been anointed to walk in victory. So long, everyone. Your can make it seem like you can't reach your dreams. Know that you've been made free and you're walking in victory. Bishop Neil C. Ellis and the Mount Tabor Church family in Nassau, Bahamas wish to thank you for viewing the Walking in Victory broadcast and invite you to tune in next week to experience this powerful prophetic ministry. Should you wish to correspond with Bishop Ellis, please write him at P.O. Box N9705, Nassau, Bahamas or email him at info at neilellisministries.com Walking in Victory
walking in victory.